This is Jack Moman, and we're speaking from O'Fallon, Illinois, which is near St. Louis. Today's December 2nd, 2011, and we have a very interesting person. He doesn't play the organ, but he's into a lot of enterprises. His name is Nelson Page, and he comes from... Richfield, New Jersey. Richfield, New Jersey. He's a past president of ATOS, a theater owner and, will, and a great lover and supporter of the theater organ, but can't play a note. Not a note. So let's, let's go at it this way. How, when did you first get interested in, I guess, the theater organ, or music for that matter? Well, I, I was always interested in music, and uh, you know, I was a uh, member of several choirs when I was a kid. Uh, but I had a great love of the organ from when I was a child, from the local church, and um, um, the theater organ aspect of it came into play when I acquired the Pascack Theater in Westwood. It had a small uh, two-manual Wurlitzer uh, that wasn't playing properly, and uh, the local theater organ, the theater organ chapter of ATOS was looking for some money and some help to get it uh, up and running, and I said, I'll give you the money. Um, and uh, the only thing I require is that you provide me with an organist on Friday and Saturday nights. You know, this little live music, a little something for, for you know, no, no extra money. And uh, I thought it would be a great idea. Being a lover of classical organ, I thought this was, uh, you know, a, a, another step in my appreciation, you know, of the instrument uh, as a whole. And um, uh, the place went crazy for it. And as I grew in my career, I saw other opportunities to be able to acquire other instruments, install them in theaters, uh, and, um, you know, it became a trademark of, uh, of our company these past 30 years. Well, you've, uh, you're involved in a lot of theaters. I guess you measure them by screens. Correct. Because they're primarily, all of them, uh, movie theaters? Um, uh, all right now except for one. The, uh, the um, Paramount Theater in Middletown, New York, is a live theater venue which can show films. Uh, several years ago, I did donate a, um, a projection system for there. Um, when the city was going to close the theater, I acquired the um, the uh, theater um, in a long-term lease, and uh, that that theater has a very large three-manual uh, Morlitzer, which is owned and maintained by the um, New York Theater Organ Society. But we use it for all of our programs and shows. So how many screens do you have? We presently operate 20 screens in three different states. Three states? Three states. What states? Pennsylvania, New York, and uh, New Jersey. And you love every minute of it? Every minute of it. And you know a lot about it. When did you get involved in the theater business? It, it was a very funny thing because, you know, at the time I was working in public education, I was the uh, district media um, uh, guy for the Dumont Public School System. And as the media specialist for the district, you know, I was responsible for all the projectors, the video studios, you know, the uh, the uh, uh, AV hardware that was distributed around the schools. And of course, you know, uh, during the summers, you know, we had uh, time off. And uh, I took a part-time job when I was 21, well, actually 22. Uh, I took a lo local movie theater job as, a, as an usher. And I was there probably about six weeks before I said, this is what I want to do. And within a year and a half, I uh, acquired my first theater, which was the Teaneck Theater in Teaneck, which is a theater that we still operate as the Cedarland Cinemas. Teaneck in New Jersey. Correct. Um, somehow you got interested in the American Theater Organ Society, became its president, yes. and I think you hold the, t the record of being a president longer because there was a little continuity problem and you were in four years instead of three. Yeah, after the third year, we were involved in so many different projects that several board members came to me and said, would you be interested in the fourth year? And I said, sure. You know, so it was an exception made to the bylaws and um, I served the fourth year. So and what years were these? Oh, geez. Uh, I think, Jack, you know better than I. I don't remember. 1999 to 2003. I think that was the last year I was Somewhere in. Somewhere in there. And then, because I had run for the board, because we had installed an organ at the Galaxy. I had a, a, a you know, a 313 uh, a Kimball that we had installed. And um, 
uh, it was Jeff Barker who said, oh, you should join this organization, the American Theater Organ Society. I was like, that sounds good to me. And, you know, I met you, and uh, we uh, had a lot of fun. And I thought this was a very worthwhile organization. Uh, I ran for the board and got elected. I beat out poor Connie Perky by 12 votes. Uh, it was a one-year unexpired term. And uh, I remember you telling me, it'll take you about 10 years to get known and have name recognition value. And uh, you were very surprised when I got, uh, got elected. And uh, unceremoniously got dumped the next year and beat by Connie Perky by nine votes, as I recall. Uh, and uh, that year was very important for me because I did work in a lot of projects with ATOS. And uh, that so was Harry, Harry, Harry Hetz last year. And I, um, I decided I wanted to run for president because I thought I had something to offer. You know, I, I didn't play the instruments and I didn't fix the instruments, but I did love them. And I did love the audience that they created. And I, and I did love the fact that this was an organization made up of enthusiasts. And these people were, you know, not there for any political or financial gain. They were looking just to hear the sounds that the organs made. And to me, that was very important. And I ran and uh, got elected. And to be perfectly honest with you, it is probably the most fun I've had in my adult life. Made lots of friends, and we've gone places that I would never have gone. I emcee emceed several conventions as president, and um, I, uh, I wouldn't have traded a moment of any of that for the world. What do you think is your biggest contribution while you're you were on the board and as president that people will remember you, remember you? This is sort of a Barbara Walters type question, but I think that the one thing that they will remember me by I think the one thing that everybody talked about and it was a real controversial issue would have been the New York Convention. I think that that was something that we had planned long and hard, and um, it wasn't it wasn't designed to make any real money, um, but the bottom line was it offered a a, a a once in a lifetime opportunity to hear some of the instruments that that people can't gain access to. Always point out the you know, Radio City Music Hall, uh, uh, you know Wurlitzer as as that particular instrument that people always wanted to hear. Um, that became a real bone of contention. But that was something I planned when I was president, and obviously it was um, we, we did it when I was still on the board after I left the presidency. So, um, yeah, but that was, that was to me, I think, the, the greatest accomplishment. Lots of other uh, things that we really were involved with, but that was the one that uh, I would have to point to. I don't know that I want to ask this, but what was the most challenging thing, the, one, the, the event or the issue you had to deal with that you hope you never have to again? Biggest heartbreak, bar none, the Smithsonian Wurlitzer. The, um, you know, uh, Brent Duddy came to me and said, you look like a guy that can get things done. And I like Brent, he's a super guy, excellent technician. And, um, you know, these are times when in a board meeting, um, people were bringing up motions to deny technicians the right to be able to hold a board seat or to deny artists, you know, people who are playing theater organs for a living the opportunity to have uh, seats on the board. And I mean, this we, we're an inclusive society. Everybody should have the right. Anybody who pays dues should have the right to sit on that board. Uh, but in any case, uh, Brent had come to us in the middle of one of these things. He said, look, before I get pushed out here, he says, you look like a guy who may, may be able to help me. Um, he says, uh, we have the Lowell Ayers Wurlitzer. We want to get this into the Smithsonian. Uh, they've accepted it. Uh, it's ready to go. Uh, we need money, and I just don't know how to get it. The board won't give us any money, and we launched the campaign. We raised almost seventy thousand dollars. We got it so that the um, the board would match those funds. Uh, we wound up after all was said and done, putting together about one hundred and fifty thousand, inclusive of the matching funds. And then, with that money in hand, we went back to the Smithsonian a year later, and they said, "Oh, we had a change in directorship. We don't we don't want the instrument." That was a heartbreaker. That really, really was. You know, do we give the money back? And, and obviously, you know, over the years, that has been uh, that instrument has been installed with that money in another location. It's in Philadelphia now, and it should live a good long life there. And it's been expertly installed. And you know, I think it's a great thing. But I think it would have been wonderful to have it in um, uh, in the Smithsonian in Washington D.C. 
Well, uh, I hear a cell phone going in the background. But Not it, mine. No, if anybody I, knows me, I don't I, carry I a cell phone. I think it's mine in the kitchen. That's <laughs> all um, right. What was I going to say here? Uh, in, in sort of bringing this to a close here, and with all of your vast experiences, what advice, we don't know who, who watches these uh, mm -hmm. videos, what advice would you have to any young person that wants to get in the theater management business, the music business, the organ business, or I don't mean necessarily business, but uh, you have any words of encouragement to anybody? I will tell you, and it's going to be a very short story. When I was a kid, um, I was rushed into a uh, into a situation with my brother. To, to, to have, we had a couple of neighbors who were involved in a recital, and we were rushing to this, this big room with all these girls running around with their tap shoes and their leotards on, and I was pushed into a group of folks with, with this man who was very unhappy and, and was very hot under the collar, and he looked right at me and he said, well, what do you want? And, and he got me upset, you know, as a five-year-old, and uh, this guy was very, very agitated, and uh, he said, well, do you have anything for me to sign? And uh, I had nothing, and of course, the lady who had taken us gave me, gave me a dollar bill, and he turned around and he signed the dollar bill. And I'll be honest with you, as a five-year-old, I had no idea who Gene Kelly was, but I still have that dollar bill. And he knew that I was upset because he kind of yelled at me. And I understand why. You know, the, the, the Fred Kelly, who was his brother, had a dance school, and all these little girls were a part of this thing, and he was an honorary judge, and he wanted to be there like he, was, like he would want to go for dental surgery. Um, and he leaned over to me and he said, look, do you want to be a dancer? I said, well, no. You want to be an actor? I said, no. He said, well, okay, let me give you this bit of advice. Be in the entertainment business because when you entertain, it's the greatest thing in the world. You get, it's like you get this feeling inside that you get like no other. And I took that advice and I've lived a good life because of it. So if there's anybody out there who wants to be in the entertainment business, I mean, you don't have to be singing in front of people. You don't have to be playing a theater organ. But if you do, entertain people. It's a great way to live your life, just like you, Jack. Well, very good. Uh, we want to thank Nelson Page for being with us today. O'Fallon, Illinois, uh, December 2nd, 2011. And Day before my birthday. I know. <laughs> we wish you very well in all your future enterprises, Nelson. Thank you, Colonel.